with Mr. Review. We spring into action with breaking reviews. Oh, hello, friends. We're still looking at the interaction among our branches, government in trees. Today, we're looking at the power of the president. If Congress writes laws, the president in the executive branch enforces laws. And with those enforcement powers, we must look at both constitutional powers and the implied powers, the informal powers, formal, explicitly stated in the Constitution, informal, things that we've come to accept the president does based on tradition and in certain events. Because once the president does something, who? Pretty unlikely he stops or she stops doing it. The roles and power of the president. Well, we know constitutionally, because of checks and balances, the president can veto acts of Congress. They also have something known as a pocket veto, where they uh, don't even touch the bill. And when the Congress goes out of session without a signature, who within what, 10 days, the bill disappears. These are formal checks. We also know that the president can, uh, can initiate treaties. This is a formal power, but requires the Senate to approve that treaty. But did you know the president of the United States can negotiate foreign policy without doing a formal treaty? These are called executive agreements. Executive agreements do not require Congress, and it's an informal power. Makes our president more powerful. And how about that bargaining power, the power of the president to get on the phone or meet with members of Congress to, uh, you know, kind of uh, bully them a bit, get them to do something, to persuade them. You know, the Constitution doesn't say anything about that. This bullying, this bully pulpit sounds to me like an informal power and makes our president extremely powerful. Well, how about laws? What happens if the President of the United States in the State of the Union address says, do this and do that, and Congress doesn't do anything? Did you know the President has something known as an executive order? An executive order has the authority of law, but does not require Congress to act. What? This is another informal power, which makes the President extremely powerful. And when it comes to signing bills into law, presidents also conduct something known as a signing statement. A signing statement is when the president says, I'm going to sign this bill into law, but I'm not so sure I'm going to enforce this part of the bill or that part of the bill. They uh, change the enforcement of a bill. Signing statements not mentioned in the U.S. Constitution and makes our president extremely powerful. Are you beginning to see a trend here? The Constitution of the United States created a relatively weak chief, chief executive, something we would have expected coming out of the American Revolution. However, the chief executive, the president of the United States, over time, using those informal powers, has become extremely important with the power of persuasion, with executive agreements, executive orders, signing statements. Oh, the power of the president. Formally, hmm. Informally, ah. Springing into action with breaking review.